I'm Cliff, and this is my garage. Today, we're starting on the massive suspension upgrade on the Cayman. Step one, lowering springs and bump stops. Hey, welcome back to the garage. And if this is your first time joining me, thanks for dropping by. So, this is step one of the massive $15,000 suspension upgrade that we're doing on the Cayman track car. If you didn't see episode one or part one where I laid out the entire plan for the suspension, I'll put a link up here in this corner. Go check it out. Now, the first thing we want to do is probably the easiest thing, and it makes the most logical sense to start there because it is on the struts, is to replace the standard springs with lowering springs. And while we're in there, as long as we've got it taken apart, I'm going to replace the terribly decayed bump stops. One thing that had me kind of confused is when I looked at the standard springs and the new lowering springs, the new lowering springs were not lower. I mean, they were the same height. And that had me kind of confused because I'm thinking, well, you know, I didn't buy this car brand new. I'm thinking, did somebody before me install lowering springs? But no, that can't possibly be because the uh, Cayman rides at a normal stock height. And so it can't be lowering springs in there. And so I started like trying to push down on the two springs and to my, my uh, hands at least, it appears that the lowering springs have a lower spring rate. In other words, they're softer. So I'm guessing that they're softer, which lets them compress more at a standard, just standing still, so that the car is lower. And then based on the way that the metal looks, I'm guessing that they are a variable rate spring, which means as you compress them more and more, they get stiffer and stiffer. So that all makes perfect sense. We'll see once we get them both in. If we get them both in and I put everything back together and everything's at the same height, I will be genuinely confused and also a little miffed because that means I spent hundreds of dollars on lowering springs that don't appear to have lowered anything. But we'll see when we get there. As you can see, I've already removed the strut from the fender well and disassembled it. Now, I didn't include that in this video because I covered that in depth in a previous video and I'll give you a link to that right up in that corner there. Go check it out. As I note in that video, you can go ahead and pull the strut out of the wheel carrier and put it on a bench or something to work on it. I prefer to just leave it right in the wheel carrier because to me, it holds it for me. It's a pretty good position and it just seems to make sense. So you can do it either way. A few things to notice here. One is I've already removed the spring compressors and let the spring completely decompress. And also, this is not a standard uh, strut top. The standard strut top looks like this. This is, an, uh, this is an elephant racing camber plate. Now, this is something I installed in a previous episode. Again, you're going to see a link up there to uh, if you're interested in that. And I've got this zip tied in order to hold it together while I'm working on it. And again, that's all explained in that other video. So if, if you're curious about that. Also, as I explained in one of the other videos, this is the PASM wire. You may or may not have this on your car. This is if you have uh, Porsche Active Suspension Management or PASM installed. If you don't have PASM, you're just gonna have a, a plain top on the strut. I'm gonna reach under here and I'm gonna get my fingers and grab the entire uh, spring seat and everything in in my hands here. Uh, basically, I'm grabbing all the rubber parts and I'm pulling them up and then removing the wire from the middle. And under here, this is the spring seat and there's a ball bearing that's built into this that allows it to rotate. You can kind of pop it apart and, uh, well, no, I can't pop it apart quite right to show you the here we go. Hang on a second. Let me just get, gonna separate that out. And here you, you can see the, there's the, the ball bearing. Just leave all this just stuck together and set it aside. Removing the spring itself, well, that's pretty darn easy. 
and then we remove this washer. Notice its position. The concavity is facing down or the dome is facing up. Now here's your bump stop. It's this discolored piece of rubbery stuff right here. There is a, like a washer or a shim embedded into the end of it. And then there's this plastic cover on the, on the lower part of it. So we just pull that up and that shim will come right off. And then this whole thing just slides right off. And you can see there's the bottom of it where it's decayed and gone to pieces. This is this is in pretty bad shape. It's, it's cracking and falling apart. So that's why we're replacing it. Looking here at the bump stop, you can see the little recess where that spacer or ring or whatever you want to call it goes in there. And on the bottom end, this um, ridge goes inside this piece right here of the cover. So you're just going to kind of work it in there and just turn it and it'll pop right into place. And on that ring, if you look here at the top of the strut or the shaft here, it has a definite shoulder to it. And on the bottom of this piece, this ring, it has a concave area that fits down and matches with that. So make sure you get that right. The flat side goes up and it goes right there in the end of it. Feed the PASM wire through here. Just push it back down. Bump stop replaced. So here's our lowering spring and I've already got the spring compressors on it. What you want to do is you want to try and get these on here sort of 180 degrees apart, but not, not quite. What is that, 160 degrees or so? Uh, just getting more towards the outside. I just find that easier. Also, take note of this the end of the spring here. It has to go in a specific spot. It has to go right in that shoulder there. And I'm not sure how visible that is. This shoulder right here is where it, where it fits onto. Make sure you get that right. And make sure that when you use the compressors that you're grabbing enough spring. Basically get, get one on the bottom here and then on the third coil. And then over here you want to get, and this isn't really the bottom. Let me make a note of that. The bottom is right there. You don't want to grab the bottom of the spring because that would keep you from getting, into, getting it into the bottom seat correctly. So you're going to grab one coil, skip a coil, and then grab the next coil on both sides to get enough with these particular um, compressors. And I'll give you, I really like these. They're very well made, very secure, and uh, I'll give you a link to them in the video description down below. So let's get this into place. Again, make sure that that end of the coil is the end of the, of the coil there goes into that little perch that's on there. Let's put the spring seat and the ball bearing back on uh, this right here with the lip poking out. That is the bottom. You can also probably see the, the indentation where the old spring had, had left in there. And I just try to take where the old spring end was and get it in the same spot. Probably doesn't matter. Now, in order to get this to sit well, you might need to adjust how much you compress the spring, but you want it kind of like this where it's sort of even, although you can't get it perfectly, but this, this is a good spot where there's enough of the top of the strut poking out, enough of the shaft poking out to uh, be able to put the, the final nut on. Now we put on the top of the strut, working it into the the spring seat. There we go. Now all we need to do is put the nut and washer back on the top, torque it to the correct value, and if you need to know how to do that, again, that's in the previous video, and then we release the spring compressors, and we're finished. Except, of course, I screwed up. Let's take this back off. How many of you caught what I did wrong? 
I forgot the other washer. Again, it goes concave side down or dome up. It goes on top of that uh, bump stop, like on top of that uh, metal insert there. Then we put this back on. And you can do it all at one shot like this. I just find it a little easier to do it one at a time. Although that was pretty easy. There you go. Fairly straightforward job that you can do with just some fairly simple common tools. Now, very important. When you lower the suspension, you're changing all those alignment angles. You need to get the suspension realigned. Either align it yourself, which I'm going to be coming out with a video sometime soon on my own DIY way of doing suspension alignment. That's different from anything else I've seen on YouTube and highly accurate. Plus, it works on staggered width cars like the Cayman where the front wheels are narrower than the back wheels. And I've never seen a YouTube video that addresses that. Now, you can either do it yourself or you can take it to a shop and for $100, $150, you can have them adjust the toe-in and the camber for you. Now, before you go, go down there, smash that thumbs up button, give me a like on the video, let YouTube know that you enjoyed this content. And while you're down there, go check that subscribe button. If it's big, shiny, and red, that means that you're either not one of my subscribers or you're one of my subscribers who's been mysteriously unsubscribed. Go down there, click on that thing, get subscribed to the video. Does it cost a thing? And if you want to keep up with the rest of this massive $15,000 suspension upgrade, and all the other things I'm doing to the Cayman and all the other things I'm doing around the shop, go click on that bell icon. That turns on notifications for this channel, and that way YouTube will let you know every time that I post something new from here in Cliff's Garage. I'll see you next time.